Hi guys, welcome to my art channel. In today's video, being that I had so much fun using salt to create my last watercolour sketchbook painting of a blue tit, I thought I'd have another go on this cheeky macaw parrot. I'll talk you through how I added salt to create the effects you see here, as well as go through some of the other techniques I used for the macaw's darker neck feathers as well as his shiny beak. So make sure you watch till the end if you want to see all that and I hope you enjoy the video. Before I begin painting, I do like to start by swatching out and mixing up some of the colours I'm going to use by looking at the reference picture to help. Pre-mixing paints can save valuable time later on, especially when you're using the wet and wet technique or when timing is really important. For this painting, I started off by choosing cadmium yellow light and mixed in a bit of cadmium red light for his yellow feathers. I chose cobalt blue as a base for the blue feathers and indigo and paints grey to mix into the darker areas as well as form a base layer for the parrot's beak. I also swatched out some cobalt violet hue, but as you'll see later on, swap this up for some neutral tint instead. I started off this painting by laying down a base layer onto the head using the wet in wet technique and mixing together the cadmium yellow light with the cobalt blue hue. Whilst this was still wet, I added in a bit of sepia at the base of the green feathers and let it bleed out. Then I began on the beak, again pre-wetting my paper first before dropping in some of the Payne's grey. I dropped this in quite sporadically, trying to get a bit of texture to the beak because that's what I could see from the reference picture. I also, whilst this was still wet, added in some of the indigo colour as well to kind of mix and bleed on the paper. Looking back to my reference photo, I could also see some brighter blue shades in the beak as well, where the light was hitting it, and I wanted to drop those in whilst the paper was still wet as well. I thought this would help to add some interest to the beak, but I didn't want a harsh edge so I used a damp paintbrush just with clean water on it to soften those edges. I then continued to build on the colour by adding in more Payne's Grey and Indigo. I also started to work in some texture to the beak at this stage, just by drawing some simple lines with my paintbrush and mixing it up a bit so it wasn't completely smooth. With this base layer down, I then moved on to the bottom part of the beak and worked it in the same way. So using the wet in wet technique, dropping in that Payne's Grey to act as a base and then building on it gradually. There were white edges around the top and bottom part of the beak which enabled me to put in those darker areas without it all bleeding together. So now with some of those darker shades of the beak in place, it was time to work on those bright yellow feathers around the bird's neck. I started off using just the cadmium yellow light working on wet paper, but then thought this was a bit too bright, so added in some of the cadmium red light. Whilst the paper was still wet, but not too wet, I then dropped in some of the salt on this section and then repeated this for the area of yellow feathers underneath the bird's beak. I've just used regular table salt again today because I had a really good effect with it the other day, but it's important to get the timing right, so you don't want your paper to be too wet because it won't work, and equally you don't want your paper to be too dry either. So if you wait for a little bit so that your paper just starts to dry whilst it's still glossy and then add the salt, that seems to give a really good effect. Whilst this was drying, I then moved on to other areas of the face and started to put in some of the details around the parrot's eye. I also used the wet in dry technique as well to try and put in some of the base layer down around his eye. I also used a really tiny round paintbrush and some sepia paint using the wet in dry method again to add some more details to the green feathers on the parrot's head. 
before then using the wet in wet technique to drop some of that cobalt blue into the blue feathers on the back of the parrot's head. Where the light's shining on top of the parrot's head, I lift some of that paint using just a damp paintbrush and a piece of kitchen roll. Now with those base layers in and the yellow feathers dry, it's time to brush off the salt. And I was really pleased with how it turned out. It's so easy and gives a really nice textured effect to those feathers. For those really dark feathers under the parrot's beak though, I wanted to try something slightly different as I thought it would be a nice contrast to the more looser effect of the salt. I wanted to try the negative painting technique again, and this is where rather than paint the shapes themselves, you concentrate on painting around them. I have used this a few times before, but for some reason it still takes me a little while to get into the swing of it. I think the key to making sure this works is to make sure that you don't wet or paint adjacent areas at the same time, and that way you can keep your edges clean and crisp and stop it from all bleeding together. So what I tended to do was wet the area first with clean water, add the paint so that it could bleed out nicely, and then use a fine paintbrush to pull some of that paint up into the dry area above it to create those little feathery effects. I built this area up using several layers, building up to gradually darker and darker values to get the contrast I wanted. The colours I used were mainly indigo and neutral tint for this, as I wanted the darker shade of the neutral tint, but also wanted to add some indigo in there as well. After this, I then tried to blend this area into the yellow feathers, just by adding some burnt sienna to make it look really cohesive. Then with that done, it was time to go back and build on the first layer of the parrot's beak. I did this using the wet in wet method again, laying down first just some plain clean water and then dropping in my colour. This time though, I opted for the neutral tint instead of the Payne's Grey as I really liked it and preferred it to the Payne's Grey because of those purpley tones it contains. I did the same on the top part of the beak and just made sure there weren't any harsh edges by dragging a clean wet brush along that right hand side. When it came to building up the blue feathers on the top of the parrot's head, I went for the wet and dry technique this time, as I wanted to get a few more feather details. So that's a wet brush on dry paper. I then used the same sort of technique to build up the feathers at the top of the bird's beak and added in some sepia just to add some detail and shadow around the top of his head. I also built up some more depth on the yellow feathers using more of an orange golden mix. I didn't want to cover up the texture I'd got with the salt but at the same time I wanted to make it look a bit more vibrant. And with the last of the yellow feather details in, I had to make a decision on how I was going to fill in the rest of the blue feathers. I decided to do the negative painting again on the left hand side, as you can see here, and just use the same method as before. For the main part of the blue wing though, I still was unsure at this point whether to do more negative painting or to use the salt technique again. So I filled in a little bit more detail around the bird's head whilst I made that decision. I decided to do a little bit of both. There was a dark area above the wing here with some really nice details and I didn't want to lose those by just using the salt technique. But I did decide to do the salt technique on the area of the wing to the right of it. This way I could use the wet in wet technique and drop in some really bright cobalt blue. Sometimes when you add the salt, you can get a lightening of the overall look. So I was conscious to put in quite a lot of strong color at this point before I added the salt. That was something I discovered when I did the blue tip painting last week. I dropped in some indigo and also some greens as well. 
I added quite a lot of salt or rather a generous amount just to get some really nice texture. And as it was drying I still wasn't 100% sure that I was happy with it but I carried on letting it dry and added another layer to the parrot's beak. This time I used a more concentrated paint and less water to really darken up those values. I used the same techniques I had for the initial layers, so I used that clean damp brush to wipe along the edge of that side to keep it nice and bright. Then it was time to move on to those black feathers around the parrot's eye, and for this I used some concentrated black paint and a really fine round paintbrush. It was important at this point to really study that reference photo to make sure these feathers were all in the right direction. This would help give his face shape. I really enjoyed doing this bit as this fine detail really helped the parrot start to come to life. I also added some dark sepia and some depth to his nostril and added some small hairs around that area as well. I also wanted to build in some texture and some folds into that sort of skin area underneath the black feathers because it wasn't just the white of the paper and I used an indigo for this. I also put some details and shape around the eye and darkened that up using some more sepia. This really helped it to pop. At this point I was quite happy with how it was all coming together but I still needed to tackle those blue feathers at the bottom of the picture. So I tried to define some of these using some darker colours of the cobalt blue mixed with indigo just to kind of build up some depth into the area above his shoulder and along the back there. I went for more of the negative painting technique here as I really like the end result. By this stage in the painting I'd gotten a bit more confident with what I was doing with it but I think it's a technique I'll continue to practice. For the area under this wing where I'd used the salt technique I wasn't entirely happy with it although I do like the texture as it didn't really follow the line of the feathers looking at the reference picture so I ended up darkening this area up using a wash of indigo just to kind of give it a bit more form and dimension. I did have a lot of fun with this piece though and really relaxed into it and took my time over it and enjoyed the whole process as well as all the learning things along the way as well. So let me know if you like this video by giving it a big thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel. And this is how he turned out. Let me know if you've tried any of these techniques before and what results you've had with them. And here are some more videos that you might not have seen and might want to check out at some point after this video. So thank you so much for watching everybody. Thank you for all your support. Have a great week and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye.